I have built a Redwood app that uses WebSockets for real-time updates. But first, a word from our sponsors. I'm just kidding, we don't have sponsors. Uh, but this is YouTube, so I feel like I have to ask you to like and subscribe the video. So let's actually get into it. Uh, there are a couple of things that led up to this. I asked a bunch of my friends what kind of API they would build if they were to start a new company. And pretty much all of them said they would build a REST API. I thought it would be interesting to see how that could work with Redwood, since Redwood is so focused on GraphQL APIs. I also know that a bunch of people have asked about WebSockets and real-time support in Redwood. I built a real-time chat app using Redwood a couple of years ago, but then I used Superbase real-time uh, capabilities. So I knew it could be done using third-party uh, services. But I haven't heard about anyone doing it on their own using WebSockets. And apart from all of this, I uh, have a friend and I wanted to teach him a new card game. And it's difficult to teach someone a card game on just a video call. So I thought I would build a simple website or web app where we could play the game and I could teach him. So that would be the perfect opportunity for me to play around with both an, a REST API and WebSockets. So here on my screen, you see the game. Uh, I enter my name and create a new game. Get a unique game ID that my friend can use uh, to join my game. And as you could see there, as soon as he joined, he showed up on my screen as well. So everything is synced. I can uh, deal cards to us. And as soon as I deal a card, it shows up for all players. So everything I do here is initiated by a REST API call. So I, uh, I play this card, call a REST end endpoint, and then the server uses WebSockets to broadcast the changed game state to all players. I can also update our scores in real time. I can give him nine points, and he sees it uh, immediately over here, and I give myself uh, five points and again in real time it's updated on his screen as well so this all works very well uh, traditionally redwood has focused on serverless deploys like netlify and on netlify the whole redwood api lives in a lambda function uh, and the way that works is netlify spins up a small uh, function the lambda function with all of the api in it uh, as soon as someone makes a GraphQL request to, to Redwood, to the Redwood application. So the Redwood application sees the GraphQL request, builds a response, and sends it back to the client. And then the server is shut down. And the next time a new GraphQL request comes in, the server is uh, started again, and then shut down. And this works fine for, for GraphQL, but it doesn't work at all for WebSockets. WebSockets requires that the server is all st uh, constantly running to, to keep the connection alive. Uh, and besides all of that, the server also needs to know how to communicate over the WebSocket protocol. So I, I just started uh, playing around on localhost because that was easy. I can control when my dev server starts and stops. So the only thing I had to figure out was how to make, uh, make it understand the WebSocket protocol. Um, so Redwood's dev server is built with Fastify, and Fastify is a web framework that is for, for Node.js that is uh, inspired by Express and other web frameworks. And thankfully, they had a plugin for Fastify, uh, Fastify had a plugin for WebSocket support, so that was easy. I could just uh, download it and configure it. So let's look at a little bit more closely on the WebSockets parts, and then we can do the REST API part some other time. Uh, and for that, I wanted to use, switch over to a simpler app. It's just uh, some kind of basic scorekeeping thing, where I enter my name and my score shows up. Uh, someone else over here, his name and his score, and it's synced across. So now then, I, when I update my score, it's synced in real time 
and again, it's the same here. It goes up over here in real time. So let's let's actually look at some code. All Redwood projects they come with a server config file, which is used to configure the specify dev server. As you can see here, I have registered the WebSocket plugin from Fastify. So I just used yarn add to install it and then register here in the config file. And then we also have to register a, a path or a URL for the WebSocket communication. And we need to tell it to use WebSockets for this, for this path. So when a message comes in here, I parse it and save the score to player D, which is just the name. So the server side code is pretty straightforward. The the weird thing here is that all of the server logic has to live in this, which is basically a, a config file. But if you find this interesting and if you have some Good use cases for WebSockets, please let us know. And if enough people request it, we definitely want to make this nicer and easier to use. So you don't have to place all your logic in a, in a configuration file. So let's also look at uh, the web side of things. So I just created a basic home page with uh, an input field for the name and the score and down here i loop over all the all the scores for all the players and just just dump them in a list the interesting thing is this websocket thing here where i have all the players it's the context that i have written that handles all the websocket communications for you i can use it to set score for for myself and to get all the players and their scores down here. And this is what it looks like. When, uh, when it's first mounted, this use effect will be triggered and a new WebSocket connection will be created. And here you can see we use the WebSocket protocol, WS, for this is like for unsecure communications, like HTTP. For secure communications, like HTTPS, it would be WSS instead. But localhost is unsecure. Uh, and then over here, we have that URL that I added to the configura configuration file before. Um, and so this socket will now be uh, listening. And as soon as you get a message, we dump it to the console. You can see down here, I have uh, dumped the player score updates that I did before. And, actually, and we will actually set uh, all the players. So it expects to get a an, an, ob an object with all the players and their scores. Because it's a, it's a record of all the players. And then we have this function that it used to update a score. So here is for receiving updates from the server, and here is for sending messages to the server. So we send the player name and the player score. It will here as a message, we parse it because you can only communicate with strings not objects, so we have to parse the string and make, to make it an object, turn, turn it into an object. We find the player with this name in the list of all the players that we have we keep up here, which is another reason the server needs to uh, always be running, otherwise we will would lose the, all the players, since we just keep them in memory here. Um, so we find the player update its score and then it sends for all the uh, connected 
uh, clients, it will send the full list of all the failures to, to each one of them. So that's how this uh, the, the WebSocket part of the context works. And then it's just a standard React context with a context provider with the players and the update method that you need to wrap around your, uh, yeah, around whatever, wherever you need want to use it. So I just put it in app, uh, app TSX. I just put the provider around all my routes. So every, all the routes can access the, the WebSocket. And, and that's it. It's uh, for a small example of this. It's it's actually pretty easy. But what I also did to make it even easier for you to play around with is I created a setup command. And this setup command will uh, do these updates to the. It will install uh, the plugin, register it, also register a. Uh, endpoint for WebSocket communications, and it will give you the context wrapped around your routes. Uh, but I can't know how you want to use it, so I never, uh, or where you want to use it. So I, the, the setup command will not update your home page. This code you will have to write uh, yourself. And the way you use it is, let me, Open new console here. It's, uh, it's easy. So in your Redwood project that you want to use uh, for trying out WebSocket, you just run uh, yarn dlx Redwood setup WebSockets. So this is uh, super experimental, uh, not official at all. Will probably never make it into the core unless there is a lot of requests for it. So that's why the setup command looks a little bit different compared to official or normal Redwood setup commands. This is a separate package that lives on NPM uh, that you can run to set up WebSockets. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching and don't forget to punch that like button.